Hey, shalom everyone. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer. I guess I'm going to uh, uh, put this out as a Ray Bash's Ramblings, but also file it under the Red Flag series. Uh, this has been on my mind for the last uh, couple days, and I've just kind of been rolling over this theme and this thought in my head, trying to flush it out, uh, trying to define it. Uh, put sharper lines around it, uh, create a sharper image out of it, and to put my finger on some things that have eluded me. Uh, I want to talk to you about the religious con man. The religious con man. If anybody throws up a red flag, it's going to be the religious con man. But one thing I noticed about the religious con man is they always have a very similar look, and they always have a very similar feel. Now, the specific con man, because con mans come in all shapes, sizes, colors, stripes, and spots, right? The specific one I'm going to hone in and target has a specific look, has a specific feel. Uh, sometimes I'll see somebody and or, or, you know, see a ministry or whatever, and I'll be thinking, man, they're, they're a con man. And I'll immediately feel kind of convicted because it's like, wow, that's judgmental. You know, where, where's your facts? Where's your basis? Back that up. You know, I mean, that's that's just a, that's a pretty heavy accusation to throw at somebody and you don't know a darn thing about them. Don't know them from Adam. It's not necessarily a, a flashpoint judgment where I just look and judge. It's It's more so of a vibe that I get, kind of a check in my spirit that caused me to cry out, that person's a con man. And, you know, I'll, I'll say that in my head, but I'll never say it to anybody else or, or say it out loud. And then I'll start researching this ministry or this people or this group or whatnot. Come to find out, yeah, there's some kind of, you know, suspicious, shady things kind of going on. I'm taking a pause every once in a while because I'm drinking a nice piping hot cup of coffee while, <laughs> while I'm doing this. Um, anyway, the religious con man, the one that, the, the religious con man that I want to bring out is the down to earth, salt of the earth, uh, Southern, uh, good old boy, guy next door kind of con man. I mean, con men run the gamut, especially religious con men. Uh, a lot of religious con men, you know, have million dollar homes, has a couple of private jets, uh, you know, they have mega churches, they have mega ministries, they have ghost writers for people to write books for them, you know, things like this. You know, there's there's the top of the food chain con men. I'm I'm more focused on the bottom of the rung, close to the bottom of the ladder con men. Because most people run into these types of con men. They are all over the internet. They flourish on the internet. You know, before they were internet, uh, they, they were the type that would uh, make homemade tracks or make homemade cassette tapes of their teachings. They would have Xerox photocopied sermons or books that they've made, you know, or something that they pump out at Kinko's or whatever. They would just kind of show up at a church unannounced and say, the Lord told me to, to speak to you guys. And, you know, that's kind of the way they operated back then. And I guess they still do. But now with the advent of the internet and social media, uh, they have their own podcast. They have their own YouTube channel, you know. Okay. So I've kind of defined who I'm talking about. Uh, like I said, they have a specific look and a specific, a specific feel and a part, what was bugging me was that I couldn't quite put my finger on things. So I just began to really meditate and pray on this issue. And all of a sudden, some, some uh, commonalities popped out regarding these religious con men. These religious con men that I'm talking about, uh, and, and, and I'm not trying to make blanket statements. So before I put out these bullet points, please note that it is not a one-size-fits-all that it is not a blanket, all-the-time true statement. There are 
I repeat, there are exceptions to the rule. Very rare exceptions to the rule, but there is. So by and large, these things that I'm going to point out are red flags and usually do indicate a religious con man. Uh, usually these people will have no formal training, no formal secular and or religious training. You know, a lot of them have not even graduated high school. They say they have felt called to a higher, uh, you know, to a higher calling, a higher purpose, and they didn't need school, that God told them to leave school. Or if they did graduate, they just kind of graduated with, you know, a run-of-the-mill degree. And, uh, you know, usually these con men, if you were to, if they were to give you their resume, their resume would be three or four pages long because they never stay at jobs too often. Uh, you know, they stay at jobs uh, for months at a time, you know, once in a great while, years at a time. But it'll usually be like uh, low entry jobs, jobs that only require a high school diploma or not even. Um, you know, food service jobs, janitorial jobs, uh, salesman jobs. Um, you know, things, things like this is usually what the, or manual labor, such as, uh, you know, factory jobs where they're dealing with small parts and, and, you know, putting together small things, assembly line kind of stuff. And this is usually the jobs that they have and that they will cycle through and they won't stay at very long. So no, no formal training or education. And, and I'm not saying that every minister has to have a formal education. It helps. You know, uh, like I said, there's there's rare exceptions to the rule. So no formal training or uh, religious and or secular education. A lot of them have been raised in church, uh, some kind of church. Uh, maybe they didn't go. Either they went all the time, every time the doors were open because they were made to by their parents, or they lived in a rough uh, other side of the tracks, broken home. Uh, to where some religious person took interest in them, and they th their attendance was spotty, but the spiritual religious aspect of what they were exposed to really created a, some sort of desire and hunger within them, and uh, they wanted to be like what they saw without going through the hard work to get there. Uh, so those are those are other indications there too, um, you know, and and if they do have um, a college education. Uh, it's it's usually a community college, and and again, I'm not slamming or down in community colleges, or it's just usually some sort of uh, mail order, um, correspondence, religious education from X Y Z ministry. Uh, and again, I'm not slamming that. That those are very helpful and edifying to a lot a lot of people. But they're taking this and trying to say, okay, well, this gives me the authority to say this, that, and the other, and to teach this, that, or the other. Okay, the next thing is that they have no, usually they have no um, religious affiliation and or accountability. Um, again, I'm not big on denominations. I'm not big on organizations because they all have their dark underbelly. They're 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 man-made. They're man-constructed. They're they're human. So therefore, they have faults and flaws and frailties, and they're not perfect. And all of them have you know the shady side to them. But there is something to being a part of an organization because there is accountability, because there's checks and balances, because there is an overall general outline structure uh, that they go by, kind of a code of ethics or bylaws. And uh, a lot of these religious con men uh, do not have any religious affiliation, um, any denominational or sectarian affiliation. If they had past tense they left because god told them to they left because uh they couldn't learn anything through them anymore that they reached the apex of what they could absorb and learn and that they were actually in a position to where they could teach the teachers and you know uh this this type of thing um or because they asked too many questions or challenged doctrine that they were kicked out or ousted out, and they 
flaunt that as some sort of badge of courage. And again, I'm not trying to make a blanket statement because there are legitimate people who asked hard questions and these denominations got uncomfortable because they they couldn't answer them. And so they did, you know, kick you know, certain people out. Doesn't mean that everybody that was kicked out of a organization, a religious organization or denomination is is a con man or a con artist. But I'm just saying that that usually is one of the things that fit the bill for a religious con man. So that's another thing. Uh, and kind of going along with the um, low entry job levels and the temporary job situations where they can't hold down a job, they're continually cycling through one job or the number, another, hopping from one job to another. This also goes hand in hand. They're always broke. They're always broke. They're always asking for money. They're always panhandling. They're always scheming on, on how to get more money. They're always trying to guilt somebody into making money. They make very poor financial decisions where they go in debt because they feel that God has called them to buy this piece of equipment, to buy this property, to buy this storefront, to where they run their church or their synagogue or their ministry, or they felt the Lord telling them to do this, and, and they go into debt to do it. They put it on credit, something that they can't pay back. And so they are in debt, and they are always asking for money. Uh, there, there's always some sort of crisis in their life, in their home, in their family. Oh, my power is getting shut off. My water is getting shut off. Oh, me and my family got evicted. Oh, we're going to move. And all the time, it's not their fault. It's the other guy's fault. You know, somebody spoke ill of them and they're conspiring against them because they, they know they're godly people and religious people. And so therefore, they get booted out or evicted. Um, and really, there's more to the story. There's another side of the coin that they're not telling you. So that's another indication that most likely you are dealing with a religious con man. And I said, and as I said, not always, but usually a lot of these come from the South. There are a lot of the, in the North. They even have a, uh, another different feel and another different flavor. But these, uh, you know, these religious con men, whether from the North or the South, they, they usually hold to a very militant, strict uh, religious worldview of commandments and codes of ethics and, you know, structure and things of this nature. And, and uh, they expect everybody to follow that except themselves. They always have sort of some sort of uh, excuse or reason or logic that they don't have to follow the same rules they're telling others to follow, that there's exceptions to the rules or that because they're called or they're anointed or whatever, that they're exempt, that God doesn't expect them to follow that particular aspect of, of rules. They're usually very um, militant also in the aspect, and again, I'm not trying to make this as a blanket statement, but usually they, they have one particular translation that they use, and nine times out of ten, it's the King James, or it's a um, or it's their own translation, one that they, a Bible they've actually translated themselves, or another Lone Ranger translation of some religious group or some translator that you've never even heard of that ha has no credentials. Usually they go by that. A lot of times they will use sacred name Bibles or sacred name scriptures because they're all about mysticism. They're all about spirituality. They're all about the deeper, sowed, mystical, spiritual level of things. And, and they try to computate and calculate numbers and letters and words and putting this and that together. And again, there's a time and a place for that. There is legitimate expression of that, but they're the ones that see some spiritual reason, a demon or an angel, or some sort of spiritual message behind every rock and tree and every flat tire and every single thing that goes on in a person's life. So that's another thing that, that you need to look out for when you're dealing with, with these types of individuals. And if you see any of these red flags that I've mentioned, run for the hills. Uh, you know, don't, don't subject yourself or put yourself under their authority or under their teaching. Um, yeah, don't do it. Uh, also, a lot of times, not always, again, I, I don't want these statements to be blanket, one-size-fits-all statements and absolute statements because there are exceptions to the rule. Nine times out of ten, they are conspiracy theorists, extreme conspiracy theorists, 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I believe in a lot of conspiracies myself. You know, there's, there's a lot of conspiracies out there that I think are truly legit. And I do believe that there is a new world order and an Illuminati and that there's, you know, people that are behind the curtain running the machine, uh, you know, and then a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, ruling authorities that are in the public eye, political or what have you, are just kind of puppets. Uh, but, but I'm talking about just extreme, like, like, you know, dig yourself a bunker and stockpile food to the end of time and trust absolutely no one. And, you know, er, you know, there's, there's word, there's codes and phrases and words that everybody says. And, you know, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, loony bin extreme conspiracy theory, right? So that's another thing that you look out for, because these are the type of people that will try to form communes and cults and will gather a group of followers and disciples and isolate themselves and live out in the woods or live out on a ranch or a farm or some property and you know they will start you know having their own dress code dressing a certain way and and eating and acting and speaking a certain way and uh that's another thing if 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 they go too far with the spiritual speech you know, like I'm trying to talk to you like a normal guy, like a normal human being, but if they're always trying to wax eloquent and use big fancy words and try to, uh, you know, throw something spiritual in every single con conversation, you know, like if somebody scratches their head or sneezes or blows their nose or, or, or passes gas, they try to spiritualize that and say that that means something. Like I had one guy tell me one time that because the wind blew the keeper off my head, that that was the Holy Spirit, the Holy Wind, telling me that I shouldn't cover my head and I shouldn't wear a kippa. Dude, it was the wind. I'm bald. I don't have anything to attach the keeper to. That's why I usually wear bigger keepas that fit my head. Hello? They're trying to spiritualize it and find something behind everything. So, um, those are, you know, uh, some of the big things. Another thing is they are always, they always try to brand themselves and pass themselves off as having some sort of secret knowledge that nobody else has um, or that very, very few have, a, an elite circle, a, an elite small few, and that you, you are in necessity of having the secret information. So you need to listen to them. You need to follow them. So they're all about secret knowledge. And say, oh, you won't get this in church. You won't get this at a Bible college. You know, you can only get it from me or you or my group or whatever. Uh, so the secret knowledge or revelation, they'll somehow they'll have some cockamamie story. How and I'm not again. I'm not trying to diss the Holy Spirit and and I'm not trying to you know say that God can't do these things. I do believe in dreams. I do believe in visions. Um, you know, I do believe in, in, in personal revelation, but usually these religious con men will say that they got their calling or their start because an angel appeared to them or because Jesus appeared to them or that they had some kind of dream or something greater spectacular happened to them, which called them to this path. So that's, uh, that, that's another thing that you need to, to look out for. Um, I kind of wrote these things down, so I'm trying to go down this list to see if, uh, to see if I missed anything. Um, usually also they'll have an unstable family life. Usually the, they'll have been divorced two or three times. Um, and you know, their family situation is kind of sketchy. You know, maybe their kids are always fearful or nervous or their, or the, the wife is always fearful or nervous. Um, they, they usually live in, in impoverished conditions. They say that cleanliness is next to godliness, you know, and I believe that 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 the way you take care of your home and yourself says a lot about a person. I knew this religious con man who was so focused on pumping out his newsletters and his commentaries that he lived in a in a trailer where water literally ran down the side of the wall when it rained. He wouldn't get off his butt and repair his own trailer. He had a woman, a woman disciple do it. And she says, oh, I'm glad to do it because he's busy doing the work of the Lord. He doesn't have time for menial stuff like that. Bull crap. God expects you to take care of your house and your possessions. I know that everybody's not a Mr. Belvedere when it comes to cleaning their house. And I'm not saying spotless, white gloves, spick and span type of clean. But when you always see disarray, dirty clothes on the floor, animal feces on the floor, uh, pizza boxes and wrappers and undone dishes and 
and you know just everything is unkempt and and there's a fetid smell in their home that is another indication that they are a religious con man and again not try to try to over spiritualize things but i've noticed that that uh that you know uh chaos uncleanliness usually draws bad spiritual elements because they thrive in that you know uh they have places to hide in in environments and situations and places like that also these religious con men when you bring up a teacher that you have sat under or that has taught you or a ministry um, or a book you've read they will almost always have something disparaging to say regarding that minister that ministry that church that organization and they'll say they got a revelation from the holy spirit that 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 you shouldn't be involved with them or reading their stuff that they're wrong and that's another thing. Everybody else is wrong with them. Everybody has it wrong, but they've got it right. They've got the right answers because they've got a hotline to God. They've got special revelation. Uh, they have this secret spiritual knowledge that you need to decode everything. So these are the religious con men. These are also the type that that try to pass themselves off as the regular Joe, salt of the earth, blue jeans, t-shirt kind of guy. Um, you know, so they 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 just have just like you can look at somebody and know that they have Down syndrome. In a spiritual sense, if you're in tune, you can almost always look at a person and 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 know without even having any proof that these are religious con men. And when you start exploring and and investigating, you find out that that check in your spirit, that 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 gut reaction was true. Because you have the Holy Spirit in you that sets off warning signals and red flags to help keep you from these people and these things. So, um, and they'll have some sort of crusade against a particular uh, ministry or minister, and they'll always badmouth them. Uh, not only that, they'll, they'll also have some sacred cows, some pet doctrines that they're always preaching and that they never get off the soapbox of. Whether it's the sacred name, whether it's a particular Bible translation, whether it's... Uh, some sort of gift of the spirit or whether it's some sort of revelation or whatever it's just you know it's it's they just never stop beating that dead horse or that dead dog so uh, i know this has been kind of a scattered disorganized uh bullet point list of you know these these religious con men specifically of the lower rung bottom of the ladder bottom of the food chain kind of sort but i hope that as you've listened to this this podcast this video uh, that as you've heard me tick off these red flags and things to watch for in religious con men, that maybe you, it, it might, uh, you know, it, it, so somebody's face might come to mind or somebody you know may come to mind that is a con man or somebody that you may actually be sitting under or teaching or, or learning under right now or ministering with is one of these uh, type of people. Also, another thing before before I sign off here is they don't they don't get along with or play well with others. When they're in a group of other religious people, they always want to jockey for the leadership position. Even if it's just a bunch of other ministries or denominations, they want to be the one that's that's running the show. And uh, so they've got pride and, hu and lack of humility issues, but they want to pawn themselves off as, oh, I'm a humble person. I'm a down-to-earth person. You can talk to me. You know, and they will they will, when you open up to them, they will be logging in their mind the secret dark places of your heart things that you're confessing so that they could use it on you later to blackmail you or to guilt you uh into doing or saying something or whatnot uh because they will uh, threaten to expose you so uh these all are telltale signs of religious con men that are you know the the bottom feeders of of the religious food chain so to speak these are the ones you run into uh, at random in public on the street, these are the ones that that have uh, their own, um, you know, uh, YouTube channel and uh, podcast, uh, you know, and, and things like that. Um, so, hopefully, this has helped you to open your eyes a little bit to kind of be more careful because there's a lot of ministries out there, and usually uh, they're they're on the fringe. They're usually not. In a major sect like uh, you know the Baptist, the Southern Baptist, or big denominations, they're usually on the charismatic cultic fringe of these particular groups, 
or, you know, and that's why they're coming in droves, like con men are coming in droves to the Messianic Natsari Hebrew Roots movement. Uh, and that's why they're flourishing there. And that's why there's so many to watch out for. That's why I've made these these red flag video series to warn you that they are that just as much as they're entrenched in Protestant Christianity, they're entrenched in Messianic Judaism. And look out and beware for uh, for these guys and these people and these organizations, because I want you to stay safe. I don't want you to get steered in the wrong direction. Um, you know, also, if they do give you their credentials, uh, you won't be able to follow up on those credentials. You won't be able to track down the people, places, ministries, doc, uh, documents, diplomas, certifications that they claim and say they have. Uh, or they'll say that it got lost in a flood or a fire or this person died and is no longer. You know, they're, they'll make some excuse why you can't trace it, why you can't track it down and get it back to them. Uh, and so they'll make up their own credentials, you know, when pushed against the wall and when asked, because they do know that not having credentials and not having uh, any accountability is one of the signs of, of, of a con man. And they don't want to come across as a con man. So they'll make up these things. So uh, just, um, just be very aware uh, of these aspects. Okay. I've rambled on long enough. I could probably go on and on and on. Maybe one day I'll make a part two. Maybe I'll have more to add to this later, but guys, thanks so much for listening. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Abrahamsdescendants.com getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.